So we Israel United in Christ, we out here to teach our people to stop the crime. Stop killing one another. Right. Why is it that every weekend there's like five or six brothers and sisters getting killed in the city of Chicago? We got brothers and sisters getting shot in Chatham. We got brothers and sisters getting shot in Eaglewood. We got brothers and sisters getting shot and killed in Lawndale on the west side. Right. Why is those things happening? When are we going to stop? If we apply the Bible, we can stop the violence. Here's one law that we can utilize to stop the violence in the city of Chicago today. Read it. This is the book of Exodus, chapter 20 and verse 13. Read it. Thou shalt not kill. Read it again. Thou shalt not kill. You see that? If we utilize the Bible, read it. Exodus, chapter 20, verse what? Verse 13. Read. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not kill. We wouldn't be killing each other. What? We wouldn't be killing each other. Women wouldn't be aborting their babies. Men wouldn't be grabbing pistols, shooting their own brothers. Women wouldn't be stabbing each other. There wouldn't be no murder in the city of Chicago. There wouldn't be no murder in anywhere where we live at. If we just utilize this one scripture, read it again. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not kill. Meaning don't kill the same people that look like you. That's what the Bible says. But a lot of our people don't want to utilize the Bible. They just let it sit on their bookshelf and just collect dust. Some people put it on their, in, their, in their car and don't even open it up when the answers to all our problems is in the Bible. Read it, up. Read it one more time. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not kill. But why is our grandmothers going to the Christian church if they don't teach their sons this in one scripture? All they know is tithe the money. A lot of our people are going to be in the Christian church tomorrow celebrate Mother's Day. But nobody's going to open up this Bible to Exodus chapter 20, verse 13. That reads what? Read it again. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not kill. Excuse me, sir. In your car, in the trunk. Read that scripture again. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not kill. Because if we've utilized this one scripture, one scripture, Women would not be aborting their babies. Give me Jose a foreign one. Bring it up. Women wouldn't be aborting their babies at all because they fear God. They enjoy life. Having babies is an enjoyable thing. It is a blessing. Read it. This is the book of Hosea, chapter 4 and verse 1. Hear the word of the Lord, ye children of Israel. So God is saying, hear the word of the Lord. Not the word of your pastor at the Christian church, but the word of the Lord. What is the word of the Lord? This Bible. This King James Bible says, what? Thou shalt not kill. This is the word of the Lord that you should be hearing. Read. For the Lord had a controversy with the inhabitants of the land. God is saying that he has a problem with the blacks and Hispanics and the Native Americans here in the city of Chicago. Read Why? It's because we kill each other. We shoot and game bang one another. We grab a pistol, spin on the block. We got guns with switches on it. Right. We turn an automatic gun to a semi-automatic gun. Semi well, semi-automatic to automatic. We got 12, 13 year olds going to schools with double bags full of guns. God has a problem with that. Do you have a problem with that? And my brothers, my brothers, I can we stop the crime. My prayer. Hey, let me show you. Let me show you what the Bible says. Come here for a second. Give me two minutes of your time, bro. You two with the hat on. Let me show you what God says. Go back to Exodus. Let me show you what God says. Pray, that's good. But you have to apply what the Bible says too. You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of our people they've been praying for years. We've been praying for a long time. And it only gets worse. But we haven't applied what the scriptures say. Read it. This is the book of Exodus, chapter 20 and verse 13. Thou shalt not kill. What's your name, bro? Jamil. Jamil? Yeah. My name is Jose. Jose. Nice to meet you. What's your name, bro? Uh, 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 Alright, listen. Let's, nice to meet you, brothers. Let's do this again. Thou shalt not kill. So it says, you shall not kill. Right. Meaning, don't kill the brothers that look just like you. Right. Right. Because if you do that, what? You're not, you, you have no love in you. 
You know what I'm saying? Give me Leviticus 19. Now look, you know people that sell drugs, that gang bang, that shoot, you know people like that, right? Yeah. What do you tell them to stop? What do you utilize to tell them? What do you want me to say to them? I say, it's an unhealthy lifestyle. It's an unhealthy lifestyle. It's an unhealthy lifestyle. They don't listen because they wrap into their own world. Right. They wrap into their own emotions. They wrap into their own world, wrap into their own emotions. Most times people react off her feelings. So you're giving them your words, right? Yeah. Let me show you God's words, right? Because the Bible wants you to listen to what God's words is and then do what God's words. This is what you should be telling your brothers that still living that lifestyle of gang banging, selling drugs, things of that nature. Read that. This is the book of Leviticus, chapter 19 and verse 17. See that? Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thy heart. You see that? Because the way, only way that I'm going to kill you is if I hate you. Right. So exactly. God says, look, don't hate your brother in your thoughts. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Don't hate your brother in your thoughts. Read on. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor. So look, so what you're supposed to tell your brother that's living that lifestyle? Nice hey, look, bro. God says in the book of Leviticus, chapter 19, verse 17, don't hate your brother in your thoughts. So I'm supposed to correct you from doing it. I'm supposed to stop you. Now, nah, bro, don't put the guns down, bro, because God says so. Not because me, I'm only doing this to say this to you because I love you. I don't want to see you go to jail for 30 years straight. I don't want to see you having another black mother crying on these streets because her son is dead. Read on. I not suffer sin hold on, hold on, upon hold on. him. So look, where you see yourself at right here? Where you see yourself at? You a black American? So you from the tribe of Jew. What about you? Same thing? Same thing, right? So you know what this means, you being from the tribe of Judah? This means you part of the greatest nation on the earth. That's, That's right. right. Because have you ever heard, when you go to a job application, right? What did you fill out? Did you fill out African American, black? black Is that what you did? Black African American. But, but what does that mean? Does it have any type of meaning to it? I myself don't know the meaning. You don't know what the meaning is? Give me uh, Israel. You know, my name is Israel, Genesis. Genesis 32. 32 and uh, 24, 27, 28. Let me show you what the name Israel means, right? Because when you start subscribing to yourself of what God calls you versus what the white man calls you, because this is how we got called black Americans. This is how we, this is how we got called that. Our names, right? What's your last name, bro? You know that's the name of the slave master that enslaved your forefathers? So when we got off the slave ships, we went on to the auction block. After the auction block, we were sold to the Thurman slave master. Everybody on that plantation was named Thurman. So he was given a cursed name. But this is God's name right here. Read it. This is the book of Genesis, chapter 32 and verse 28. And he said, thy name shall be called no more Jacob. But Israel. But your name is now Israel. But what happened for now your name to be what third? Give me Isaiah 65, 15. So what happened? We didn't obey. You got you, you got kids? How old are your children? Uh, five and six. Five and six, right? So you got a five and six year old. You're born a girl? Boys. So what if what if the six year old snapped the five year old? What do you do? Tell him don't hit your brother. Tell him don't hit your brother. If he do it again, say, forget you, daddy. He do it again. What you do? I would say punish him, put him in a corner or something. So you, you, you discipline him, right? You discipline yourself for his bad behavior, right? So that's the same thing God did with his children. He disciplined us for our bad behavior. So now we take on the name of Thurman. We don't have the name Israel no more. We went on punishment. Slavery was punishment. Slavery was punishment for the whole nation. For the tribe of Judah, for the tribe of Benjamin, the tribe of Levi, right. all 12 tribes, so forth and so on. Right. Read it. Listen. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 65 and verse 16. 15. 65 and verse 15. And he shall leave your name for a cause. Read it again. And he shall leave your name for a cause. So you no longer going to be called Israel, but you're going to be called Thurman. So you're going to leave your name Israel for a curse. Your name Israel means a prince that has power with God. That's what Israel means. But Thurman means what? A slave, which is what? 
So you're going to serve your enemies. Who did this to us? The white man, right? The so-called white man. But he's Esau according to the Bible. He changed his name so you won't know who he is. So you can still serve him blindly. So you can still carry his name, Thurman, blindly. You understand that? Read it again. Therefore shall thou serve thy enemies. So he said, therefore you're going to serve your enemies. And guess how you're going to serve them? Read on. Which the Lord shall set against thee uh -huh. in hunger. In hunger. 
Jones here. The white man. But what God calls him? For the top. Therefore, shall thou serve thine enemies. You have to serve your enemies. Go to the where it says for what? For hunger. For hunger. So you have to serve your enemies for food. You understand? You start to click a little bit now. You have to serve your enemies for food. And for what else? I didn't thirst. And for water. So if you want to quench your thirst, you have to go to your enemy for it. If you want something to drink. And if you want to go to CES right here. Get you a Gatorade. Who owns CVS? Who? Who? Who does God call me? Yo, who? Say it again. My enemy. Say it again. Enemy. See? You gotta say it loud. You gotta say it with conviction. Why? Because our people are scared of the truth. Look, they are afraid of the truth. But God says the truth shall set you free. You understand that? We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold, from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone, 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling, these are how we men repented at heart, the scriptures is proof, IUIC, we deliver the truth.